from Bug Eye Guys. Today we're talking tires. So this is a video all about the different tire choices for a Sprite, Midget, Bug Eye, whatever you may have in this Bridget world. This is where we're gonna start. 501, the original first Bug Eye Sprite, which we own and have shown in concourse competitions. It's a gold medal car. Is wearing a reproduction bias ply tire that matches the original. Kind of cool to see 501. Very special car, of course. And the tires this car is wearing are accurate, authentic. They're reproductions, so they're new tires. It's new, fresh rubber, but they are bias plies. And they're a lot of fun to drive. They're, uh, they just have a different handling characteristic if you've never driven with them. It's a little difficult to explain, but they're less grippy until they warm up. And then once they warm up, they really have a nice ride. So there's nothing wrong with the bias ply choice. Some people really want an authentic, nostalgic tire, and that would be the one. We sell that in our catalog. So, in fact, all the tires we're gonna talk about, we use on the builds here in our building, and we've done hundreds of sprites and midgets. I've driven more than 500 of these kinds of cars. So I have a strong opinion about which tires work best. There's nothing wrong with this bias ply choice. Uh, I do think a radial, a modern radial, is better for most people. Let's look at some of those. This is a client's car that came to us from Georgia. He's working on a color change and it's a restored dashboard. Terry's done an amazing job with all the mechanics getting this restored. And the car came to us with these tires. So I wanna put this in the video. This is a 14513. It's meant to approximate that 520 uh, bias ply we just looked at. Now the problem with this tire is it's really too narrow. Yes, it does match the specs of what came with the car. I could see some tire guy saying, hmm, let me look this up. This would be the tire that's exactly compatible with the bias ply, but it's very skinny. And driving this thing, you notice that the car is very slippery. It locks the wheel when you really get heavy on the brakes because there's not much contact patch. So this is the one tire in the video that I honestly would say is not useful. In fact, I'll recommend to the client that he changes to something with a little bigger footprint for a little more grip. Another option, this is a Kumo 155. And this, in a sense, is kind of the universal acceptable choice. A very good choice. We've used many, many of these tires. It's an economical choice. They're not very expensive. And so many of these cars have old rubber that's aged out. So, it's really valuable to put a new fresh uh, radial on the car. This is a car that is called Amel that's going to Montana and it has brand new 155 tires mounted there. It's a nice wider choice. So you have a bigger footprint and yes, more is better. More rubber is better. But once you go too wide, what starts to happen is you lose steering uh, input sensitivity it becomes harder to steer these cars and it's not as much fun so yeah more is better but up to a point this is a vredestein 165 and this is really my favorite choice because it's wide enough that you get more traction more braking performance better handling but you don't lose uh you don't lose the ride quality. With a 175, you start to really have a harsh ride. This is my wife's car, bug eye called Iris. And this is the tire we're using on this car. Very nice tire, not always available. All of these tires are subject to availability, but we sell all of them and we always have an option in 165 because that happens to be my favorite choice. The other challenge as the tires get bigger is that this gap right here can be an interference point. All of these bug eye noses have been hit at some point, it doesn't take much, they move aft, and then you end up with a chafe point right here. So you'll wanna look after that if you do mount new tires on your car, because sometimes that can be an issue. I'm moving up the ladder in terms of the hierarchy of types of tires, this is the indulgence category. This is a Dunlop. And I love this tire. This is just a cool looking tire. The tread kind of wraps over the side. It's more aggressive looking. This is Gumby, my car from high school that we've restored many times and keep making it better. A bit of a test bed for some of the stuff that we work on. 
And so I wanted to test these tires and I love them. I, I also put them on our Morris Minor in the family. They're just a very nice plush tire. They're soft and very grippy. And that extra softness makes for a nice ride quality. You want extra softness in your tires because on a car like this that has such little suspension travel, rubber makes a massive difference. So I love this tire. This is the one, if money is no object, this is the tire to buy. This is a Blockley 165, another awesome tire that we sell. And I love this one just because it looks cool and it has a British brand name and it just sort of feels like it fits the car far better than many of the sort of Asian generic tires that you see out there in the world today, especially in these smaller off sizes. So the Blockley 165 is another awesome choice, a little bit more cost uh, efficient and it's a little bit less expensive than the Dunlop. Here's one more choice. It happens to be on a 67 or 66 MGB GT that we just put a five speed in. It's heading to Montana, uh, Minnesota soon. This is a Michelin tire and it's available in the 165 and 155 for sprites. But the reason I love this one is that it's just the perfect period cool tread, you know, 1970 uh, Maserati uh, Ghibli or whatever you might have would have had a similar tread pattern. It's of the correct era and it looks just great. So for those of our customers who appreciate that a tire is a statement and a piece of the art, the overall sculpture of your vehicle, that's when this starts to matter. If you could care less what your tire looks like, that's an indulgence you don't need, but it's as we build more and more custom and tricked out, really cool restored cars, things like the tread of the tire start to matter that much more. Christmas over here, this car is getting a flip forward nose conversion. So we're in the middle of that at the moment, but it helps us for this little video because it has 160, uh, sorry, 175 tires. These are ma national, ma national. Looks like an M. National, national ovation. You know, that's the problem with all these little tires. They have these goofy names. This one's no exception. These are aged out and they're gonna go into the recycling pile, but the car will get 165 tires instead. So a 175 will fit on a stock steel wheel. This is what it looks like. And of course you have what, again, is a very attractive tread size. It looks like it would be great. But what I find is that you have a much harsher ride feeling with this wider tire and more steering input required. So I'm not interested in that. When I'm driving a bug eye, I want a little bit more comfort, a little nicer balance, and that 175 is too wide. If nothing but performance matters to you and you can care less about ride quality, then no problem, but you just need to know that right up front, a 175 gives a much harsher ride we do sell them because some people want them, but I think that it's too wide a car, a tire for the car. So there you have it, tons of choices. Happy to help you give us a call. We have all of these tires and all the parts you would need in our parts catalog. And if you have a car that needs rescuing or restoration, we'll be happy to bring it here and take care of that for you. And thank you very much for watching here at Bug Eye Guy.